Hi students, uh, in this lecture, I am going to discuss about motion parameters. In previous lecture, we have discussed about motion. Motion is always described with respect to an observer, isn't it? That observer we have taken it to be origin of the rectangular coordinate system. Do you remember I told you you have to take up x axis, y axis and z axis. The origin of the coordinate system acts as observer, isn't it? Now, the motion parameters that I am going to discuss are basically And the third one is velocity and the fourth one is acceleration. Of course, within velocity also we will describe two types of velocities. One will be average velocity, other one will be instantaneous velocity. In case of acceleration, we will describe the average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. First of all, let us focus on displacement and distance. Let me take up an observer. An observer means a regular coordinate system. Origin will act as the observer. Let me take up a body or a particle because in case of kinematics, we will treat the body as a particle. Say, the initial position of the particle is described by its coordinates x, y, z. Through some path, it has travelled from initial position to a final position. It has gone like that. It has gone to a new position which will be described by x dash, y dash and z dash. Displacement is defined as displacement is defined as change in position of the body. Who will describe the change in position of the body? You observe a strike word. Isn't it? Originally initial position is x, y, z. Final position is x dash, y dash, z dash. The strike word length will describe the change in position of the body. Hence, the length of strike toward strike line will give you a displacement, magnitude of the displacement. Whereas, second parameter, do you remember? Distance. Distance will be given by the total path length. This total path length will give you distance. Hence, total path length gives you distance. Understanding these two parameters is very important. For example, as an example, say you have undergone a motion from one point to other point through a semicircular path of radius r. Then, in this case, this will be initial position, this will be a final position. We can define both the distance and the displacement in this case. We observe strike word length will give you displacement. As radius of the semicircular path is r, this will be diameter. Hence, displacement will be given by 2r. Whereas the total path length, the total path length means in this case it will be circumference of the semicircle. The total path length will be how much? Probably you may know that for full circle, circumference will be 2 pi r. For half circle, circumference will be pi r. Hence, path length will be given by pi r. So in this case, if they ask you a question to find out the displacement, displacement will be equal to 2 r and distance will be equal to pi r. That makes the difference. The total path length will give you distance and straight word path length will give you displacement. This will be displacement. This will be distance. Next. 
The next parameter that I am going to describe is average velocity. V average. The average velocity is a parameter which is related to full time interval for the motion. We will define it as total displacement divided by total time interval over which the motion has happened. So, the average velocity is defined as total displacement divided by total time whereas average speed is the next motion parameter average speed average speed speed is related to distance velocity is related to displacement average speed is defined as total distance divided by total time. So while calculating average velocity, you need to involve 2 r. While calculating average speed, you need to involve pi r. That is very important. Let us under, try to understand some examples related to this. Before going into that, I will try to define one dimensional motion. One dimensional motion. See, in case of one dimensional motion, while the body is moving from one position to other position, either x coordinate or y coordinate or z coordinate only changes means the body is going to move either parallel to x axis or parallel to y axis or parallel to z axis you see here while the body is under motion only either x or y or z changes. Such motion is known as one dimensional motion. Definitely correspondingly there will be two dimensional motion and three dimensional motion. If two coordinates combinedly changes, then it is known as two dimensional motion. If three coordinates simultaneously changes, then it is known as three dimensional motion. After understanding one dimensional motion, we will try to understand two dimensional and three dimensional motion. Means body either moves along x or y or z axis. Let me take a one dimensional motion along x axis. equal to 1.5 meter position. 
In this case, suppose they have asked you to find out the displacement. Displacement will be final position minus initial position. So, displacement will be equal to 1.5 minus half minus 1 which will be equal to 2.5 meter. In this case, if they ask you to find out the distance, distance will be total path length. Total path length is also equal to 2.5 meter. So, whenever a body is moving along single direction without changing its direction of motion, I am repeating, whenever a body is moving along one dimension without changing its direction of motion, displacement and distance are same. You don't get confused. I will give you one more example. Let us suppose the same body which is travelling along x axis, this is x equal to minus 1 meter position, this is x equal to 0, that is x equal to 1, x equal to 2. You start thinking, let us suppose the body is initially here, it has gone forward. till x equal to 2 and again started coming back and it has stopped its journey at x equal to 1. Now the question is to find out displacement and distance. All these things I am discussing under the title of one dimensional motion means the body is moving only along x axis. Is it okay? Now displacement. The displacement. Displacement will be defined in this case as final position minus initial position. Final position is x equal to 1, initial position is x equal to minus 1. You can understand here the difference between displacement and distance. 1 minus of minus 1 which will be 2 meter distance. Distance will be equal to total path length. Total path length means this length plus this length. How much will be this length? This length will be equal to from minus 1 to 2, total this length will be 3 meter because from here to here it is 1 meter, 2 meter and 3 meter. 3 plus this length, 2 to 1, how much it will be? 1. So it will be equal to 4 meter. Have you understood the difference? In case of displacement, we need to take up the difference between final position and initial position. How much it will be? 2 meter. Whereas in case of distance, you need to take up total path length. Total path length will be equal to 3 meter plus 1 meter, which will be equal to 4 meter. Understanding the difference between displacement and distance is very, very important. Now, I will try to give you some examples which are related to the average velocity and the average uh, speed. Let us suppose, as an example, suppose a body is travelling along one dimension, it has travelled a length L1 with velocity v1 and then the next length l2 with velocity v2. The question is to find out the to find out the average velocity. The average velocity is the question. The average velocity will be equal to total displacement divided by total time. How much will be total displacement? Total displacement will be equal to L1 plus L2. Total time. Time per first part of the journey plus time per second part of the journey will give you total time. Total time. Which is equal to T1 plus T2. Time per first part of the journey. During first part, 
displacement is L1, velocity is V1. So time for first part will be L1 divided by V1. What about the time for second part? L2 divided by V2. Then the average velocity will be equal to total displacement that is L1 plus L2 divided by total time L1 by V1 plus L2 by V2 will be the average velocity. I will give you one more case. I will extend the same problem. Say the body has to travel back with velocity V3 a displacement L3. Then the question is to find out the average velocity and the average uh, speed. First of all, let us focus on the average velocity. To find out the average velocity, you need to find out total displacement. How much will be total displacement? L1 and L2 are in forward direction. L3 is in backward direction. Final position minus initial position will give you displacement. What will be final position minus initial position? L1 plus L2 minus L3. Why minus L3? It has traveled back. Isn't it? So this minus this will be equal to this total minus this one, which will be L1 plus L2 minus L3. Total time. Total time will be equal to L1 by V1 plus L2 by V2 plus L3 by V3. Then the average velocity will be equal to total displacement L1 plus L2 minus L3 divided by L1 by V1 plus L2 by V2 plus L3 by V3. Now, now let us focus on the average speed. In order to calculate the average speed, we need to take into consideration of distance. Total distance is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3. Total time. Why total distance is L1 plus L2 plus L3? I am telling you again. Total distance will be total path length. L1 plus L2 plus L3. Total time will be same timing. L1 by V1 plus L2 by V2 plus L3 by V3. Hence the average speed is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 divided by L1 by V1 plus L2 by V2 plus L3 by V3. You try to understand the difference between calculating displacement and distance. Displacement will be final position minus initial position. Distance will be total path length. 